Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers and Math Medley Family Math Nights. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some strategies for developing number sense in your primary grade students. Now, kids who have a strong sense of numbers understand what numbers are, how they relate to each other, uh, the effects that different operations have on them. Uh, they can easily compose and decompose numbers, and they make reasonable estimates. So developing number sense in our students is critical. Okay, so this first activity I'm going to share with you gets kids to understand that numbers are made up of smaller numbers, and we're going to do that by coming up with different combinations for a given number using two different colored tiles. So let's say that we were using, uh, we were working on the number four. One combination to four would be two orange tiles plus two green tiles, so two plus two equals four. Now, um, some students may need um, some graph paper in with as many um, squares as the combinations that they're working on um, and that way when they fill in those squares they know that they've reached uh, their combinations but that's for the students who need that okay so we've got two plus two um, equals four we could come up with um, three orange plus one green so three plus one equals four we could do one orange and three green, so now we've got one plus three equals four. And in fact, I was working with a little kindergartner who was working on this exact combination, and the light bulb went off, and she said, hey, they're the exact same thing. And I asked her, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, look, three plus one is the same as one plus three, they're the same thing. And that is exactly the kind of discovery that you want um, your kindergartners to be exploring. Um, so then our next thing to do was, um, I asked her, well, gee, I wonder if that works for other combinations or other numbers. So we got a group of kids to uh, work on this and we collected data. And from uh, the students, um, they were able then to discover their own rule um, that, uh, that it doesn't matter the order that you add the numbers, you're going to get the same answer. And that is very powerful uh, because it comes from them um, having created that. And really what they're doing here is um, what we call to property in in a math that we call the uh, commutative property of addition. The order that the add-ins are added does not make a difference, and it's very important that our students um, understand that. It's important for a couple of reasons. One, it makes computation a little bit easier. Once they understand that five plus seven is the same as seven plus five, you really only have to learn one of them, right? Um, and the other thing is, is that um, at this age, uh, kids are really using their, they're doing this a lot, right? They're counting on their fingers um, and that's okay uh, at this age. It's a manipulative, just like these are manipulatives. Um, they need them, they feel comfortable with them um, in the beginning to get those number concepts down. And so when they discover something like this and they need to add um, two numbers, say two and nine, um, and they, they, they understand this, then adding the two on to the nine is easier than adding the nine on to the two because they're doing um, the little finger uh, activity. So they would have, for example, if they were adding the nine onto the two, they would keep the two in, in their head, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, that's a lot of counting. Does it get them there? Yeah, it does, but isn't it more efficient to go nine, 10, 11? It's more efficient and it's an awful lot faster. And so rules like this will help make that computation a lot easier. Okay, so the next thing that I have students do is to take those combinations and actually create cute little cards like this. Okay, so here's the combination four. Here's another one. Um, and you can see in this one here that we've got um, zero. Poor little zero gets forgotten, right? Um, but we need to, you know, a combination of four certainly is just three green tiles and no blue tiles. And we need kids to do that as well. Okay, so some kids are ready for those equations at the bottom, and I actually wrote those in there, but some kids can, can write them themselves. themselves. The next activity that I want to share with you um, is the 10 frame. And the 10 frame is exactly that. It's a um, frame with 10 little cells in it or 10 little boxes. And I um, show that to the kids and we count. Okay, so I say count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you notice how I emphasize the five and the ten, and that becomes very, very important to this activity. So then I tell them, okay, well, I'm going to share with you a 10 frame. And there's going to be some dots in my 10 frame. And I want you to tell me how many dots you see all together. You ready? 
Okay, now the first few times that I do this, I of course let them, uh, I make sure that they have enough time to see those dots and kids are actually counting one, two, they're counting the dots, right? Okay, and that's a, obviously a pretty simple one, so that's two, awesome, great, let's do another one. Okay, ready? And again, they're counting these dots, one, two, three, four, five, and they come up with five, and I give them enough time to do that because this one is super important, okay? Um, and when we, when we, uh, when they say share five, and they go, okay, let's count one, two, three, four, five. Wow, there are five in the top. That's kind of neat, you guys. So every, so when the whole top row is filled in with dots, we automatically know that there's how many there? There's five there. So if I showed you this again really quickly, could you very quickly tell me how many dots there are? Yes, five. How come? Well, because the whole first row is filled in, and that's really important because that's going to help them solve these other problems. For example, okay, and how many dots are there? And kids will say, well, we know that there's five in the top, okay, and there was one missing, and five minus one is four. See how they're using what they know about that top row and five being there? How about this one here? Okay, so now I'm going a little bit faster, right? Because I don't expect them to be counting and I don't really want them to be counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want them to really understand that this is five in that top and then one more than that is six. Okay, so six is made up of five and one. Again, um, numbers are made up of smaller numbers, right? Okay, and another one. Okay. And for this one, actually, I might say, in fact, for some of these other ones, I might say, um, tell me how many are missing. And now they need to know that there's 10 dots all together and be comfortable with that. So 10 minus the one, or minus these nine, gives me the one that's missing there. Okay, so how many are missing is another strategy. Okay, so once they're comfortable doing that, we move on to, and this could be, um, you know, first grade, um, we move on to the, uh, two 10 frames or um, a 20, you know, 20 frames or, yeah, two 10 frames, right? So now we're going to be studying our addition facts. And we're going to use strategies. They're very comfortable with figuring out very quickly what that is, right? Or what that is, because we've done a lot of that work before. So now I'm going to put two together and they need to tell me how many are all together. And so they could use a variety of strategies to do this. They could do, um, and we talk about them, they could do doubles plus or minus one, right? So if we did um, seven plus seven is 14, plus one is 15 would be one strategy, or eight plus eight minus one is 15. Or some students will say, well, I knew that um, there's, a, there's a five and seven and a five and eight, and then I'll take these two down here and that makes another five and five. Three fives is 15, okay? So whatever works for them, but this is a very, very visual way, very concrete way for them, to internalize um, those number of facts because they can see it and they can manipulate it. So really important for, for those um, experiences, okay? So then I have, in, I have a binder set up with these um, 10 frames, and I actually um, have the PDF versions of these 10 frames on our website for you um, under um, www.familymathlight.com under the math resources section. So if you want to go there and print them out, then you'll have them too. But basically in my binder, I have uh, created the doubles. Okay. So here are all of my doubles, five plus, and I actually have the expressions written up at the top there. So five plus five, and what is that? Nine plus nine and so forth. And we talk about the strategies, right? And then I have my doubles plus or minus one, however they see it in their head. Okay, super simple. Okay, two plus three, you can see that double, whoops, double plus one. Okay, and then all the other double plus ones or minus ones, whatever works for them. And then I have my 10 plus. And, um, okay, so here we've got that whole uh, 10 frame, it's full. And by the way, multiples of 10, super, super important. We're gonna talk more about that in just a second. But okay, this whole 10 frame is filled in. And they're very comfortable now with quickly um, knowing what uh, this rep number this represents. So they're adding this number to 10, and obviously 10 plus six or 16. And then I have the number facts. So here I've got um, facts to 10 in my first section. Then I have facts to 11. Um, and then I have facts 16, or well, facts um, 11 to 15, and then facts 16 to 20. And again, we talk about strategies for um, 
uh, learning those number facts, um, when they can see it in their head, it makes more sense. So the eight times seven isn't really um, a scary fact for them anymore if they can uh, decompose or recompose those numbers. Okay, again, developing number sense. Now I said that um, uh, multiples of 10 is very important in uh, developing number sense as well. And that's when I'm gonna bring in the, um, uh, the uh, pocket chart and the zero through, um, actually my pocket chart, most pocket charts have 10 rows. And so you can only go, you can't see it down here, but you can only go to 100. I was in a kindergarten classroom a long time ago and, and we we're talking about patterns and the kindergartners said that the, um, the number that comes after 100 was 200. <laughs> And so I went, wow, really? Okay, um, we need to do some more pattern work. Um, but um, ever since then, I have always added a, that extra row on my um, member charts. And so you can see that this one actually goes up to 110. And I actually have Velcro on my pocket charts. So can you see this? Um, I left these off here so that you can see the Velcro. Okay, but I go beyond 100. I think it's really important to take kids beyond that 100 mark. It's just a pattern, right? But kids need to know that, and they go know that by going beyond 100. Okay, so one of the activities that you can do to get them to understand um, multiples of 10 and adding or subtracting multiples of 10 is to you know hide some numbers, and now we're gonna go from five to 15, and we're adding by tens, okay? If you add 15 plus 10 is 25, can anyone make a prediction? If I add 10 to 25, what am I going to get? Okay, and then, you know, you can either turn the cards over um, or cover them up like that. Okay, 35. Can anyone make a prediction for the next one? 45. And then we look for patterns, right? So what do you notice? Well, look, the ones column stays the same, but the tens column increases by one every time. Oh, that is really cool. Um, how about if we go backwards? So you gotta go backwards too. So if I had some of these covered, like this, okay. Um, 66, 56, 46, you know, we're subtracting 10, 46 minus 10. Can anybody predict what would happen? You know, what number would be under here? And then you would have 36 and then so forth. Getting really comfortable with um, adding multiples of 10. And I'll show you why that's really important. In fact, I'll show you why all of this is really important. Um, uh, because when kids are comfortable with numbers in this way and they can manipulate numbers like that in their head and break them apart and put them back together again, um, it makes computation a lot easier. Now I was working with a um, first grader and I was curious to see, now he'd been in the classroom where his teacher um, had done all these kinds of activities and I was curious to see the effect of that. So I asked him if I could sit down and, and do some addition problems with him and he said, yeah, no problem, whatever. And so I didn't show them all the addition problems at the same time because I didn't know how many I was going to end up doing, but um, here are some of them. Um, but we did one by one and I deliberately wrote them horizontally. I didn't want to put them in the vertical format where we're used to seeing the traditional algorithm. I did not want to do that. I wanted to have it this way because I was hoping that he would use his number sense to solve the problems and he did and I'll show you how. So whoops in this first one here 27 plus 13. Oh and by the way this is his actual work. Okay on this side I went over it in pen to make it easier to see. And then after he finished each one, I asked him if it was okay if I wrote down how he, when he described to me how he solved the problem, if I wrote it down because um, I didn't want to forget how he, uh, how he came up with the answers and he was okay with that. So here's his solutions and I'm gonna be talking to you about those um, right now. So, okay, 27 plus 13. He took the seven and the three and made a 10. Remember those multiples of 10, super important. He made a 10 out of that. He added that 10 to the 20 to get 30, added the other 10 to get his answer of 40. Amazing, beautiful. I went, wow, okay, that's kind of cool. Let's do another one. Okay, so 35 plus 16. He subtracted five from this 16, okay, to get 11. He took the five and he added it over here to get 40. Remember there was multiples of 10, super important. He added the 40 plus 11, and this was easy for him because it was 40 plus 10, which was 50 plus one is 51, super. Okay, now I wanted to see if he could add two numbers that resulted in a triple digit. So he wanted to make another multiple of 10 because those are easy to work with. So he subtracted two from the 55 
which left him with 53, okay? He added that two over here to the 48 to get 50. He knew that 50 plus 50 was 100, plus this little extra three here was 103, okay? So now I was kind of intrigued and I wanted to see if he could do some subtraction. So I gave him this problem. And again, the whole multiple of 10 thing. He subtracted two from 12 to get 10, okay? And then he subtracted two from the 57 to get 55. And then he knew that 55 minus 10, right? Where we got 50, 55 minus 10 was 45. Brilliant. Okay, so I want to I want to talk to you about this this one right here, the strategy that he used because this is pretty creative. He knew that if he took the same number away from both numbers here, his answer would be the same. Now let me show you that with a little simpler problem. Let's take six minus four. Okay, we know that six minus four is two, right? But let's take the same number away from both sides. Let's just take one away. So we'll take one away from six and one away from four. So now we've got five minus three. Do we end up with the same answer? Yes, we get two. Isn't that amazing? So then we could, we could then use this for more difficult problems. For example, if I did 300 minus 73. Okay, now this is the traditional algorithm that I'm working with right here. Now we know that you, you can't take three from nothing, so you gotta go over and borrow, and in fact you have to borrow again, right? What if we use this strategy to solve this problem, and we took one away from each number? So now we're left with 299 minus 72. Isn't that a lot easier to solve? Nine minus two is seven, nine minus seven is two, and then there's this two, 227. Now let's do it the traditional way. Okay, um, you don't have enough here to take three away, so you gotta move over and borrow, and there's nothing there, so you gotta go all the way over here. Okay, make that a two and make that a 10. You gotta make that a nine, and now we have 10, and now we have enough, okay? So three, or 10 minus three is seven, nine minus seven is two, and then of course there are two there and they are the exact same answer. And by the way, that's an equation. Um, so um, 227, beautiful. When we give our students opportunities to make sense of numbers, um, they develop confidence in their ability um, to, to um, perform math and do well in computation because it, it, it makes sense to them, they've created it. Um, and you've had all these beautiful discussions um, with them about uh, things like the, um, uh, uh, you know, the uh, one plus three is the same as three plus one and so forth. Um, and that builds a very solid foundation for number sense, which is critical uh, for our students to do well in mathematics. So if you try some of these activities with your students, I'd love to know um, how they go. Have fun.